Welcome to Sword of the Spirit, written and presented by Colin Dye, Senior Minister of Kensington Temple and leader of London City Church. Sword of the Spirit is a dynamic teaching series equipping the believers of today to build the disciples of tomorrow. We pray that you find these programs inspiring and a catalyst in deepening your knowledge of God, your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and your intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Hello and welcome to the Sword of the Spirit, a school of ministry in the Word and the Spirit. We've been looking at living faith. In other words, what does it mean to believe in God? Where does that faith come from? How do we know we're believing the right thing? How do we know this is not just some human invention? And you know, the Bible speaks so much about how faith brings us into contact with the living God. We've been looking at how the scriptures fuel our faith, how the scriptures give us the content of, of our faith. Because after all, faith is believing God. If God did not reveal himself to us, we could never find out about him. But God has spoken to us. The Bible says God spoke to the fathers in olden times through the prophets. But in these last days, God has spoken to us through his Son, who is the heir of all things, through whom he created the world. This is the Word of God. And when we put our trust in the Word of God, in Jesus Christ, he comes in and changes our lives and enables us to grow in living faith. So as we examine the process of faith, we know that tests and trials come but God gives us the ability to stand strong in the midst of those trials. And in this program, we're going to talk about how we can respond to God's word. What does it mean to believe him despite all our circumstances? Because as we know, life sometimes is tough and there are many things that we have to face. But the faith that God gives us is a faith that can be strong, whatever the circumstances of your life. God bless you as you watch and listen. Hello and welcome to the Sword of the Spirit series, Living Faith. We're looking at how to have a living faith, a vital faith, an overcoming faith. And we've been receiving revelation from the Lord, from His Word, about how faith works, how faith operates. It's a process. Faith is a process. It's not a one-off thing. And uh, we want to see our faith grow and develop from that tiny seed into a plant a tree that produces fruit. Now, throughout this series, I've been stressing how important it is to depend on the Holy Spirit in your life of faith. And I want to address right now a very important subject, the spirit of faith. And uh, in Galatians 2 verse 20, which is where we ended the last session, we showed how that Jesus is living in us. Christ lives in me, the Apostle Paul says. But, of course, Jesus does this by his Holy Spirit. And the Spirit that is in us is the Spirit of faith. And we need to understand that when we are moving in faith, we are submitting to that Spirit, the Spirit of faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 20 to 22 are very important verses in this respect. Let me read it with you. For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God, who has sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Now we know that the Spirit of faith, he's called that in 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 13, but in 2 Corinthians 1, it's the same Spirit, the Spirit of faith, that Paul is talking about. Now some Bible translations here suggest that Christ is both the yes and amen, as I've just read it for you from the New King James Version. For all the promises of God in him are yes and in him, amen. Now that's absolutely true. Jesus is the yes 
and the Amen. All God's promises have the answer, yes, in Jesus. They are found in Jesus. It comes from Jesus. It's our, as a result of our relationship with Jesus. It's through what Jesus has accomplished for us. So I agree. But when you look in the Greek, there is an even deeper shade of meaning here. Now, some modern translations help us understand the Greek more accurately. Verse 20 actually says that the yes to all God's promises are found in Christ and that through him we answer amen by the Holy Spirit as we give our praise to God. So let me read it as it would appear in the original. For all the promises of God in him are yes and through him Amen, or the Amen is spoken in us, the NIV says, or through us. So when we believe a promise, recognize God's, a, God's yes, the Holy Spirit inspires us with the Amen. Do you understand that? In other words, all the promises in him are yes, and the Amen comes through us by the Holy Spirit. That's what the translation indicates. In other words, God has given us our place in Christ by the Spirit, the pledge of the Spirit's in our hearts. We read that in verses 21 and 22, which means that God has spoken his promises to us and the witness of the fulfillment of those promises comes by the Holy Spirit. In other words, it's the Spirit who enables us to say Amen. It's the Spirit who enables us to say Amen. That's why you must learn to listen to the witness of the Spirit in you. When God says something and you say, Lord, can I have this promise? And the answer is yes, because the yes is spoken in Christ. The Amen is spoken in us by the Spirit and then through us as the Holy Spirit enables us to say Amen. That's why it's important to say Amen. Amen? Amen. 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 That's the witness. Now when you say Amen, it's not just you giving mental recognition that this is God's Word. So intellectually you're saying, I agree with that. <laughs> it's not just that you agree with that. I'm sure God is very grateful when you agree with Him. No, it's deeper than your mental agreement with God. This is the Holy Spirit agreeing. The Holy Spirit speaks the Amen. So that's the witness of the Spirit to your spirit that this is God's word for you. That's how the Holy Spirit witnesses to us that we are saved. We believe the promise of salvation and God gives us the spirit of witness and the witness of the Spirit inside us says what? Abba, Father. Testifying to our spirit that we are born of God. That Abba, Father, is the Spirit's Amen. Learn to hear the Spirit's Amen. God will send His Spirit to your heart and deep in your heart you will have the Amen. This is how we can hear God's Word. By the Spirit given to us. And we know in our spirit that God is saying this. There's an excitement in your spirit. The Holy Spirit's dancing for joy on the inside of you. And He's having a tremendous party on the inside of you. Celebrating the truth of God's Word. Saying, yes, Colin, yes, this is God's Word. Is this God's voice? Yes, yes, yes. And then you can say, Amen. And when you say Amen, it's through the enabling of the Spirit speaking through you. When the Spirit enables you to say Amen, that's when the faith process begins truly to operate. That's why the life of faith is also the Spirit-filled life. Acts chapter 6 and verse 5. This saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. If you're full of faith, you're full of the Holy Spirit. Living faith is produced in us by the Spirit who works, side, uh, works alongside the Word of God. And when we hear the Spirit and see the Word, we know that the Spirit of God testifies to us that that is His very Word. The Amen is spoken through us. And so we need to understand how the true faith operates 
by the Holy Spirit. And because it is a relationship with the Holy Spirit, we can find this faith process develop. Now we are talking about faith as a process. And the process begins when you hear God. We've been dealing with that in recent sessions. Now we're going to see how this process develops. Because having heard God, you must then act on that. And the first action is to receive it deep into your spirit. So that it becomes like the living seed which is sown deep in your heart. This is what I call believing faith. It's a, a real receiving of that word deep into your heart. Remember the parable of the sower. The seed that fell upon the pathway didn't receive, or it wasn't received by the, the soil. It stayed on the surface. That's what happens very often. When the word of God comes to you, you just ignore it. You don't listen to it. You don't really receive it. Then the seed that has fallen on rocky ground, that didn't have much depth, did it? Because it was shallow, it was not received deeply, and that's why it wasn't fruitful. And every word that comes to you is like that. When God speaks his word to you, you must make sure you receive it deeply. Otherwise, if it's superficial, if it doesn't penetrate your heart, if it isn't sown deeply in your heart, it won't take root and it won't produce fruit. And so, we need to hear God's word and begin truly to receive it. So this is the seed of faith. That's why Jesus said, the seed or faith is like a tiny mustard seed. He's using this as an image of faith. Matthew 17 and verse 20. He says, so when Jesus said, and because of your unbelief, and I say to you, truly, truly, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. <laughs> a tiny seed of faith has such great results. That's if we receive it deep into our experience and into our lives. Now God wants that tiny seed of faith to grow. The seed doesn't get bigger and bigger and bigger. That's what happens when we think we need more faith. Lord, increase our faith. More faith. We want more faith. Bigger faith, Lord. Bigger faith. When Jesus talks about great faith, he's talking about that tiny seed producing great results in you. It's that tiny seed beginning to grow. Great faith comes from a tiny seed which grows and develops in you. And all of these things develop side by side. And so we have to grasp that believing the word is the next step, the next element in this process of faith, having heard the word of God. Many of us, I want to emphasize this, I don't feel comfortable in my spirit just to leave this point for the moment, because many of us have heard a word from the Lord. What have you done with it? Oh yes, I remember God said that to me. Well, what did you do with it? Did you take that word, sow it deep into your spirit and nurture it on the inside? That's what I mean by believing the word, by believing faith, receiving that word deep in your faith. Now I want to deepen your heart. I want you to turn to 2 Peter chapter 1. And I'm going to read verses 1 to 4. It's going to be the basis of what I'm going to say for the next little while. Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust." A very powerful passage. It shows us, first of all, 
that God has given to us many, many precious promises. And they come to us by Christ's own righteousness. And this is an underlying principle that shows us that all the biblical promises have been made available to us through Jesus' faith. Jesus' righteousness and Jesus' faith are very, very similar. Because it's by faith and by Jesus' faith that he lived a life of obedience. It's by Jesus' faith that he obeyed God and gave himself as a sacrifice upon the cross. It's by Jesus' faith that his life is being made available to us. It's by Jesus' faith that his death is available to us. And immediately, when we understand that God's promises come to us by Jesus' righteousness, immediately, our faith is built up because it's all revealed in Jesus. All the promises are yes in Jesus. And all God's blessings are available in Him and only in Him, in His person, in His virtue, in what He has accomplished. Now, believing faith is not just believing in God. It's believing the right things about God. In particular, it's trusting that God is who He says He is, that He can be to you what He promises to be. And He will be to you what He is in Himself. I want that to sink in. Let me say it again. God has revealed himself. And faith is responding to that revelation of himself. And God has revealed himself to be in himself. The living God. The God who heals. The God who provides. The God who rescues and delivers. And faith is acknowledging that God will be to you everything he's promised to be to you because he is these things in himself and in blessing you he is being true to his nature. That's why it is without, without faith it's impossible to please God. For those who come to God must believe that He is. Not just that He exists. Listen, my friends. When, Jesus, when God revealed Himself as the I Am, He didn't just say, hey, I exist. Moses knew God existed. He wanted to know who God was. Not just that He existed. So when God said, I am who I am, He was saying, I promise to be what you knew, need me to be, for I am that God, I am. He was saying, I am that I am. He was saying, this is who I am, not I exist. So he that comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. In other words, faith is laying hold of the nature of God and it's, that's how you experience the nature of God. Faith brings you into the experience of the self-revealed nature of God. That's why, as we shall see, Peter says, we have become partakers of the divine nature. It's trusting that God is who he says he is. It's trusting that when he reveals himself, he is being self-consistent. He heals because he is the healing God. I am the Lord who heals you. Healing is his nature. Believing God and having faith is simply acknowledging that when God reveals himself, he is revealing the truth. In the Bible, the name of, per of a person reveals their nature. Did you know that? The name is not a label. 
the name is a revelation of his nature. And God's nature is revealed in the Bible in more than 300 different names. See what a great God we have and how much room we have for our faith to grow and develop. And often, all these names are summarized by the phrase, the name. We are encouraged to be in God's name. Did you know that? Matthew 18, verse 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. Do you understand this? I think we better stop and pray for revelation. When you're listening to Bible teaching, don't just listen with your minds. Listen with the ears of your spirit. For revelation can come to you that will transform you. When we gather together, we gather together in His name. With 300, at least 300 revelations of the nature of God, which you can draw from for your own needs. The name of Jesus. Now, the Bible teaches that the name of God is full of, his, full of God's power. That's why the, the Jews never dared utter the name Yahweh. They were urged to glory in his name. 1 Chronicles 16 verse 10. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. And over and over again, we see the power of the name of God. The power of the name to heal. The power of the name to destroy and defeat the enemy. The power of the name to protect. The power of the name to bless. We see all of this throughout the whole of the Bible. And so this means that God has revealed himself in his word that it's basic to his nature to heal to defeat, to protect, to bless. He is the blessed God. He is his nature to bless. So believing faith means trusting that our God is a healing God, that he is a protecting God, that he does overcome our enemies and so on. Now Yahweh, of course, is the, is the principal name of God. It's found in Exodus chapter 3. I am that I am. That's where we get the word Jehovah or Yahweh from. But the second most common biblical name is Elohim. And the Elohim word is used some 2,550 times in the Bible. It's a very, very prominent name. And it refers to the one to whom all power belongs. Now Elohim is shortened, uh, is the sh is shortened to form El. El. We've had this before. El Shaddai the almighty God, the all-sufficient God, the all-providing God. And uh, when it's shortened like this, it's often linked with a revelation about Elohim, a revelation about him, about his nature. And they reveal different facets of God's powerful nature. I'm not going to read them all. I've listed many of them for you in the manual. Elohim Kodesh, the holy. What does he say? Be holy, for I am holy, I am the Lord who makes you holy. God calls you to live in holiness because holiness is his nature and that's his name and he can put his name upon you. You can become a partaker of his name, of his nature. Elohim Tzua Yesha, the rock of salvation. Elohim Tzua Israel, the rock of Israel. Elohim Mayotz, the shelter. Elohim Malek, the king. Elohim Olam, the everlasting. Elohim Eretz, the God of the whole earth. Elohim Magen, the shield. Elohim Mashe, Maheshi, Mashe, Metsuda, forgive my bad pronunciation, the refuge and fortress. Elohim Emet, the truth. El Elohim, the Most High, El Roy, 
the all-seeing El Shaddai, Almighty Provider, El Kana, the Jealous. I said I wasn't going to read them all out, and so I'm not going to. They're all there for you. And you see in every one of these revelations, it's a revelation of the divine nature of God and that's name which he has given you. And I can't, I, I've got to get to this point. I'm so excited. I can't wait for it to come up because we have all of these names in the name of Jesus. God has taken all of those 300 names and more and wrapped them up into one glorious name. And his name is Jesus the Lord. And that's what it means when it says God has given him a name. God has taken all of his nature, all of his glory, every aspect of his divine nature and being and given that to Jesus for us. So that when we come to God in the name of Jesus, we experience everything that has to do with his divine name and become partakers in the divine nature. That's faith. That's what faith gives you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so God's promises are nothing more than verbal declarations of his nature. When God speaks, he speaks out of his nature. He speaks in total self-consistency. You often heard somebody say, well, that doesn't sound like you. Is that you talking? And what we mean is saying, well, that's not like you. You are behaving out of character. God never behaves out of character. He never speaks out of character. When God speaks, his almighty, all-powerful, his omnipotent character, his character comes out in what he says. What he says is totally consistent with his character. That means that when he says it, he will back it up 100%. Oh, hallelujah. This is such a blessing today. So we can say that believing faith is laying hold of the word of God, particularly the rhema word of God. And the rhema word of God uh, is the same as that particular aspect of God's nature and character that he is revealing to you at that time to meet your need so that you can become what he's called you to be. 